build assets. And that's what a lot of schema will tell you too. You know, but gosh, this guy really doesn't have anything. So we need to go out and build this and this and this and this. And, you know, at least start getting him some, you know, some notif- not- notices out there. Using a tool that pushes a few buttons, it may generate some code that slaps on your website. And yeah, maybe be better than nothing. But as whether you're the marketing professional doing it for your own company or an agency doing it for somebody else, what you just talked about there, the amount of knowledge you're going to build by doing that research about your client, about the competition and where the holes are or where they're, where they're really good and what you need to leverage more. got a great episode here for you today we've got terry samuels schema expert friend of the show on dropping some nuggets i had a few questions set up for terry here to talk about schema and he answers those and he also goes off script and dives into some areas that i think you're gonna get a lot of value on so if you're interested about schema how it's gonna impact your website and improve your seo check this episode out we got terry samuels right now talking schema welcome back to local seo tactics where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online i'm your host jesse dolan here with our good buddy, Terry Samuels, schema expert. Uh, Terry, ready to dig into some schema topics? I am. Thank you for having me back. Glad to be here. Yeah, this is, uh, gosh, I don't know, third or fourth time. Um, I think love having you on as a, as a regular here. Schema is a big part of SEO, local SEO. I think we all know that. If anybody hasn't checked out Terry's previous appearances on here, go localseotactics.com, go to the episodes in there, just search Terry Samuels and you're going to find a number of episodes with Terry. We started off talking super basic, getting a little more advanced. And those of you that have paid attention to these episodes have uh, reached out to us, sent in questions, things like that. And so I have a few of them here that I've been collecting. Uh, I've got a whole notebook of them actually been collecting that we're going to throw at Terry eventually, but we got what, three or four of them here today, we're gonna pepper Terry with and see if he can continue to shed some light and drop some knowledge on us uh, talking about schema uh, with your website and to improve your SEO. So um, like I said, if you don't know who Terry is, check him out, Um, just do a Google search. He's pretty good at SEO. So if you type in his name, bet you're gonna find him real easy. Terry, let's start off with the first one here. Um, most of these are paraphrased. Th- these four I've picked because they're very popular um, in various ways. So I kind of paraphrase them. I'm not going to attribute a particular person here, but all you listening that have submitted these, and if these, this kind of feels like what you asked, uh, you know who you are. And we'll reach out to you, let you know these episodes drop. And first one here is, can I use the same local business schema on more than one page, right? Whether it's site-wide or just even multiple pages, like more than one. Um, what's your thoughts on that, Terry? Um, if you if you have an exact match domain, so if you have um, you know plumberindallas.com, then yes, you can put local schema as your homepage. I would also add plumber, um, but then you could pretty much put local schema on the whole site because you really aren't going to be able to do much if you want to go into Plano and you know the outskirts sure. of Dallas, so to speak. So. And that's the challenge, obviously, with exact match domains. You trap yourself. So, but if you also have a site like mine or yours, and if I have, you know, seven different Phoenix pages, you know, web design, SEO, internet marketing, content marketing, blah, 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 that I would have that local business schema for Phoenix on all those Phoenix pages. So, um, but on my Tucson pages, obviously, I wouldn't have the Phoenix local business information. So... Um, but I, I believe on agency sites or on, you know, national sites or whatever, even state sites, um, local business shouldn't be the site wide unless it is an exact match domain. So, um, and for everybody listening, if you don't know what Terry's saying, exact match, you can have your keyword and even more importantly, your, your geographic like identifier, right? Your city, you know, things like that in your domain name, which is like he's saying that really locks you into that's, that's the area that you're serving. Um, so really, Terry, uh, that aside, if your site is an exact match, you're not tied down to that geographic location. Um, you're saying that the local business schema can be on any of the pages that are about whatever that particular city is, right? That's kind of an easy, exactly. easy rule yeah, of thumb exactly. then for everybody. For sure. Nice. So, you know, I mean, we also do neighborhood pages. So, yeah, like my Phoenix local business scheme is probably on 16, 20 pages, but just Phoenix. Okay. Um, and that's what it's called. That's local, right? Local. So, 
Um, and you want to treat it that way. One of the things, one of the mistakes I do see people make is they put local business on every page, like you said, and it's not really local business. It's not, you know, um, you know, or at least it's not the same geographic location that the schema is about. For sure. So, and local business schema is not something to add in a whole bunch of different cities, you know, um, like, you know, we, you know, Phoenix, Tucson, Mesa, you know, all on yeah. my Phoenix schema. I, I would rather break it out. So the word Phoenix local is, about right, is the most important part of it there. It's got to be yeah. right on point there. Yeah. Well, I think that makes sense and should clarify for everybody. I got a kind of a follow-up question though. Is there any reason you wouldn't want local business schema, let's say on all your Phoenix pages in that scenario, any, any sense to not put it on all of them? Um, I mean, it just really, I mean, it, you just apply it. Yeah. By default, we just apply it. I don't really see, I mean, I, I don't see any harm in not having it as long as you have other schema like plumber or, you know, HVAC contractor or something that has the same schema parts in it that local business yeah. has. Um, I mean, one of the things that we're trying to cautious people a lot on now is the duplication of stuff, right? So organization schema on, is on the whole site, and then now all of a sudden the individual page schema, we're, we're starting to find out that we don't want to mention the same things over and over again. So um, it's obviously taking us a little bit more time now to do different schema different ways because we do want to mix it up. but. At least we're being, being cognizant of it. I mean, obviously, things like your Facebook page, Facebook links, and all these different links that don't sure. change. That's not what I'm talking about. But I am talking about, like, your description for your organization and then your description for your local business. You know, those two kind of shouldn't be the same. And so right. um, we're also finding, and this isn't part of the questions, but I wanted to just tell people about it, is that keyword density, your schema matters. So... If you're going after a keyword density, and a lot of people will argue keyword density, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'm a big sure. believer in keyword density. So if my, if my target's 3 to 5% density on my page and I don't include schema, I'm probably going to be closer to 7 8%. And so mm -hmm. you really have to kind of be cognizant of that. Um, and a lot of times tools like Pop and Surfer and these things don't really take into account your schema, at least most of the time. So you really have to, again, if you see fluctuations in page content and you have schema on there, include schema in your research of finding out why. Um, that's a really good tip. So um, you don't think about that being as on page, quote unquote, right? Because you don't see it visually, but it's still on the page. It's still, so. it's still on the page. You know, it's still in the code. You still, If you look at it from a bot standpoint, it's still there. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, and to sit there and say that, you know, I've got this word, you know, nine times on my page, but then I've got it 16 times in my schema and without even trying to, you know, keyword stuff, that's kind of what's happened on accident. Right. Yeah. So, um, matter of fact, I'm talking about this um, when we're in Florida at the um, Chaz's event. And so when I do a forensic SEO, the last one I did was this big lawyer that's what happened is they had mm -hmm. nobody considered their schema with their page content and sure. it really threw stuff off. So um, I wanted to mention that on this call just to make sure that, you know, it is something that we're going to, that we're finding as a negative. And I suppose that cuts both ways. Whereas um, all that additional schema text can add a lot of content that maybe dilutes your mm -hmm. Um, percentage, but, or the other way, if it's just in there a million times, it's way out of whack. Well, what, what risk, happened right? was with this instance is that they had, um, they had a bunch of, it was kind of like a little mass, mini mass page site. So they had a bunch of pages with the same, um, you know, construction accident attorney blah, construction accident attorney blah. So, um, and that was, that's the keyword that got screwed up was, you know, mm -hmm. they just got over, they over over density to whatever the freaking comment or whatever. That's perfect. <laughs> over density, uh, making up new words as we go. But, um, yeah. but it really threw off their, if their main keyword for that page was construction accident attorney. And now all of a sudden you've got, you know, 10 or 12 or 15, I think it was like 27 in a schema that was never counted in the four or five on his page. Um, yeah. And it just, you know, so now all of a sudden we just took out the word construction. That's how we fixed it. We changed it to personal injury or, something else in the schema, you know, so we kept yeah. a couple of them there, obviously, but, um, but it's just something that we all have to look out for because even page names, you know, and, 
and links, the anchor text that we put on links, that's all included in any kind of density. Yeah. It's all readable. It's like all you said, back there for, for the bots. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, rewind that, everybody. If you didn't catch all that, there's that's some good uh, expanded off that topic right there. Good little nugget. Thanks, Terry. Um, okay, so moving into the next one, though. Uh, schema on the GMB or the GBP. Um, whether it's directly within there somehow, is there a way to inject it, to utilize it, um, or if somehow it tracks back to the GBP, the GMB ranking in general. So this one, I'm kind of curious. I don't know if you're going to give it a big fat no, nothing impossible, or if you have some some knowledge to drop. What do you think? Um, you know, we, we've, we've tested this many times, and we're still testing it. Um, you know, we can put schema in all kinds of excess data, XF data and stuff like that. We all know that Google, you know, they say they strip it out. Um, do they actually read it? Do they give us credit for that's kind of information that we'll never right. know. So I think with images and stuff, I think it's just more of a, how much time do you want to spend on it for the results that you may be or may not get? Um, right. You know, so that's kind of the way we look at images and, you know, the GBP is the same thing. We've tried to put schema in through GBP posts or, you know, whatever different variables, and that never works. Um, we're now testing putting schema on Google News Sites, um, okay. automated schema on Google News Sites. So, um, and some of them are sticking. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's there's definitely ways to go about doing stuff, but um, you know, we really haven't tested other things than than the GMB. Sure. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why I post press releases as a blog post is because I want the schema. So if I get a press release from Randy Rhodes and I'll take that press release and I'll make it a blog post, you know, I'll iframe all the links from his press release into the bottom of mine, but then I have schema in the background. So, um, so that I know we can't put schema on press releases, but right. I can do it reverse and do it on my own site and still get schema. So, um, but yeah, that's, that, as far as that goes, you know, I didn't want to say big fat no, cause we're, we always test all kinds of stuff. But again, as far as something to say, hey guys, this actually works. We right. don't have anything like that for. So yeah, technically you can inject it if you will, or, or use it. Yeah. But does it do anything? Yeah. Is the, the does, question? Does mark. it do anything? Does it get seen? That we can all see that it gets stripped out. But does Google still read it? A lot of people say Google right. still reads it. I, I would tend to agree with that. But what are they reading it for? You know, when yeah. they. You know, is it like, oh, wow, we've never seen schema in an EXIF data before. We're going to do some great things. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we didn't see anything like that. Um, I, you know, we have to, we have done some schema work with Amazon, you know, buckets and images up in buckets and stuff. But, you know, again, it's, it's a time thing. You know, how much time yeah. are you going to spend on it compared to, you know, return on investment that you, that you see from it? So if anybody watching or listening wants to try it out. You know, it doesn't sound like in your opinion, you're like, don't do that. It's going to be a yeah. negative thing for you. That's not the case, but it's more of, hey, go ahead and try it. If you find it's a benefit and you want to spend that time, knock exactly. yourself out, um, do yeah. it where you can. I mean, okay. you can, you know, I mean, you can, you know, put image schema on images. You can put video schema on videos, you know, um, but it really, like I said, it really depends on, you know, it's even like I said before with blog posts, I tell people that. Unless you have staff to do it for you, most blog posts aren't quote unquote good enough or ready enough to get schema. So sure. um, we try to add it to everybody. <clears throat> but again, if it's just a 500 word article about getting your teeth cleaned once a year, you know, how yeah. much schema do we want to put on that? You know, so yeah, there's got to be an ROI. <clears throat> so it, again, the... Yeah, exactly. It's all about time. So, um, you know, when you break out, especially when you're looking at different variables of, you know, what can I spend here compared to here, um, then, you know, I'm lucky enough. I got, I got staff that'll go in and do the article schema on every blog, but yeah. it's also one of those things that, Hey, instead of doing that, why don't you do this for me? So I have right. no problem, you know, skipping in a post or two on my website for article schema. If I want them to work on a new local business schema that's going to be on a page that I know I'm going to get, you know, great yeah. results from. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think in that sense, some things are like I might as well do it versus I can't not do it, right? It's, it's not that critical in that. So, okay. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's good. It's in really a big takeaway there is use schema for the core things that we, you, others talk about on your site, local business, these kinds of things. If you want to experiment on the fringe, 
go ahead, track your yeah. results, right? Make sure it's working and you're spending your time doing it. Make sure it's worth it. So exactly. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, scheme is a scheme is very time consuming, especially the way we do it. That's why a lot of people ask us to do it yep. for them. But, um, and again, you, it's just as web designers, SEOs, agencies or whatever, you always have to ask yourself, you know, you know, is it, you know, and again, I had a guy argue with me the other day that he's got Yo scheme on his website and he's fine. I'm like, okay, that's fine. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, it's, you know, he's like, well, it's better than nothing. I'm like, well, that's also debatable. You know, <laughs> you know, the whole idea is if, you know, there's certain things that, that schema does, and I believe the search engines that are looking for in the schema. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's bringing all the different variables into one spot, all the different mentions, all the different abouts, all the different people call them no, nodes, people call them, I mean, there's all kinds of things out there, but you know, and that's the stuff plugins and, and schema builders can't do. They're, they can't do that. They can, if you tell them that this information's out there and they can put it together in a nice little, you know, text file for you. But to actually go out and do all the research for, you know, Jesse Dolan out on the Internet, they're not going to do that. And that's the power. Yeah. That's the power of schema. So no, our human minds are still pretty damn powerful, right? In, in certain ways and gathering and processing and. It's yeah, this is labor intensive. I mean, this is why I mean, that's why you're our resident expert coming on this show is because this is this is a knowledge base to develop. It takes time. It takes labor. Mm -hmm. It takes experience. It's not easy. Um, if there was a tool that did everything Terry does, right, everybody be buying that tool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, and we wouldn't be talking about it. That's just and then, yeah. And, and, and don't think I haven't and even continue to think of how to build one. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's something we talk a lot about, and it's something that, you know, um, we have built tools to take our text file, our templates, and make changes very quickly. Um, assist but, the process, right? Yeah, yeah, assist the process, but we still can't find a way to go out and automate the research. I mean, right. you can do some. You know, you can go out and automate the research on Coke, but, sure. you know, you might be able to automate some research on the founder of Coke, you know, and all the different variables that you want to bring in, but... But still, it's just, you know, again, how much how much do I want to spend on it compared to how much is it going to help? Is it going to be accurate? Is it going to give people a false sense of security like Rank Math yeah. does? <laughs> right. right. You know, Rank Math comes out and says, yeah, this is all the schema you need. Is all you need. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, and that's the whole thing. I won't release anything unless it's perfect. But right, right now we haven't found that. But. The research is there. The, we know we have instructions and teach people how to do research. We teach people how to work in the templates. We teach people, you know, what they need to look for. Um, and it's different from a brand new 25 year old plumber compared to a plumber that's been in business 40 years, you know? Okay. So the amount of information you're going to find is, you know, it's just what, just what it is. So some, yeah. you know, some people have a lot of information out there. Some people have none. So if we yeah, the buckets we need the buckets we need to fill for each case might be the same, but the amount of data in each one, right, or how far you yeah. might have to dig in certain parts to get to it. Yeah, and, and you might have to dig, but then it also gives you a snapshot of what you need to build. Yeah. You know? right. I mean, you know, I mean a lot right. of people say I want to build, I want to be number one plumber in Dallas, but they don't think about building the brand, building the owner, building, you know, building yeah. the other stuff, the trust, the you know, authority, all the stuff that we should be building. Yeah. Um, is all part of that, you know, go out and do, you know, go out and do personal pages, get yourself out there, you know, buy yourself a personal name domain and redirect it to your website. I mean, there's all kinds yeah. of ways to start building authority. Um, and you don't want to forget yourself because when you go to exit, you're not selling Bob's plumbing. You're selling right. Bob Davis's. I've got a plumbing company, you know, right. So, the assets uh, itself. Yeah. And so that's the whole thing is build assets. Don't, don't just, you know, and that's what a lot of schema will tell you too. You know, like, gosh, this guy really doesn't have anything. So we need to go out and build this and this and this and this. And, you know, at least start getting him some, you know, some not notices out there, some mentions, yeah. some abouts. So um, it's pretty or interesting. If you're using a tool that pushes a few buttons, it may generate some code that slaps on your website. And yeah, maybe be better than nothing. But as whether you're the marketing professional doing it for your own company or an agency doing it for somebody else, what you just talked about there, the amount of knowledge you're going to build by doing that research about your client, about the competition and where the holes are or where they're, where they're really good and what you need to leverage more. 
yeah. a machine's not going to spit that back to you, right? And say, oh, well, by I the way, I, you I, might want to dig in here. I think I told you the story here, but I didn't. I don't know if I did, but if I did, stop me. But um, I mean, my team found we got hired to do a law firm. He had 17 lawyers, I think. But my team found one of his lawyers had been disbarred a year before that. And the owner <laughs> didn't even know it. The main oh guy, gosh. this guy, this guy had been working for him for like 10 months. And he, he was disbarred in that state. And so oh, my man. schema person said, hey, Terry, I, this might be a problem. And I contacted <laughs> him and I said, is this a problem? He's like, well, F, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. You know, and and no, I don't know, think anybody would have ever found it unless, you know, we were just doing research on all the different attorneys. You know, so we want to go out and find their colleges and their you know, are they even, did they pass the bar? When they passed the bar? Right. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff. Is this legal for. or not even? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. All, all the stuff you look for, for doctors and lawyers. So, um, but yeah, and that's the whole thing. That's why research is so important. People say, oh, you got to do keyword research. And I'm like, yeah, you got to do a lot more than that. You know, right. you know, our research is massive and we put it all in a folder. It's all belongs to the owner. Um, you know, this is all the stuff that we found for you, your company, you know, your keywords, you know, your competitors. And, yeah. and then we just start building out the schema. So, you know, to make it match, so to speak. Yeah. If, if that client doubted that you actually did that research and like, nah, he just uses a tool. Yeah. That was a good, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was some good proof right there. Right. I, I think this is a client for life. We call them. Yeah. Yeah. I would sure hope so, man. That's, that's incredible. That's a great story. Yeah. For sure. What, uh, do you have anything else to add on to that? Otherwise, I'm going to get into the next question about uh, DBpedia, Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikidata. no, no. Like I said, just, you know, if, if we find something that works, um, we will definitely, you know, be telling people about it. You know, obviously yeah. not public on Facebook, but um, but we will be telling people in our circles about it. And it's, um, but like I said, we have, a, we find things that will work some days, but not the next days, you know, and so. Yep. Unless we get something that tests out right and it tests out positive, you know, we're not going to tell people to look at it. So, no, that's good. And again, proof why this is ever evolving, ever testing, right? Nothing's ever static. So, got to. Hey, everyone, just a quick message about our free SEO audit tool on localseotactics.com. And we'll get right back to the show. If you haven't taken advantage of it yet, go on out to localseotactics.com slash free SEO audit or uh, look for the yellow button up in the top right corner. Click that. And it's going to take just a couple seconds. You enter in the page that you want to optimize what you're looking for the audit to score against. Enter in that page, enter in the keyword you're looking to get optimized for and enter in your email address, click the button, and it's gonna take a few seconds, and then it's gonna send you off a PDF report uh, via email. Uh, it's a great report. It's gonna kind of give you an overall score of some vital SEO areas for that page and for your website at large, even though it's auditing this page. Um, it's gonna tell you some of the good things that are happening, some of the bad things that are happening too, and give you basically a checklist of some things that you need to shore up and what you can do to improve your SEO for that page for that keyword that you're auditing. Now you can use this as many times as you want. You can do multiple keywords, multiple pages, multiple keywords on the same page. You can even use this to uh, check against your competitors, right? If you want to do a little reverse engineering, uh, see how they're scoring for a certain keyword, what they may be doing good uh, that you're not and some things to improve there. So lots of different ways to use it completely free. Again, go on at the local SEO tactics.com slash free SEO audit, or look for the yellow button in the top right corner of the website. All right, let's dive into this next one here. So paraphrasing a couple here, I kind of mashed them together, but should I use DBpedia, Wikipedia, Wikidata, and Google's Knowledge Graphs uh, all in the same as is, or same as areas? I don't know if that's the exact same one I sent you, um, but basically what, you know, for the same as, mm -hmm. what kind of references do you want to use, right? Even more broadly, or what do you want to avoid? Any, any updates on any of that? We talked a little bit about that in one of the previous episodes how to use this, but well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, <clears throat> and same as is something that could be very, very powerful. So I tell people to try to keep same as around um, the service, the person, the company, whatever's on that page. So um, and Wikipedia and, you know, DPpedia and all these other ones, you know, are fine. Um, but I try to get him. Don't be afraid to put the number one competitor. You know, hmm. Neil, Neil Patel's in my SEO knows about, you know, I mean, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he's, he's there. Google knows yeah. he's there. Why wouldn't I use his name? You know, so Interesting. don't just limit yourself to Wikipedia and DPpedia and these other ones out there, because 
you know, I mean, especially if you're doing medical, you know, you got WebMD, you got these things that, you know, yeah. these the same as that you can use for your different services, um, you know, that just brings it in more powerful. So, and then, you know, if you use a tool like topical relevance that I've talked about, you know, yep. a lot of times you'll even try to, you'll even get the machine IDs for those, you know, whether the more web direct. ID MD yeah. has their own machine ID, you know, Saltera does, you know, local SEO tactics, yeah. we all have our own machine IDs. And, and that's kind of the link you want to use, right? As far as right. CMAS. So, um, but yeah, so we, we try to get very creative with CMAS, same as, especially if it, you know, um, is relevant you know, to that page. That's why I have a page that I put all my citations on the same as, um, it helps me index citations, I think. Um, but you know, I have a page for all my different maps, you know, that has all my, I call them my, my local business references, you know, and I put them all in a, just on a page. Yeah. So I got one page that will have a thousand citations. And then I have a tool that'll tell me once those links break, and I like that. I like to know when citations break, so I can either try to get them reestablished or get a new one. Um, because I build links to those, especially the, the powerful ones. So, but you know, and that and that's the kind of thing that I try I try to use for knows about you know. So um, you know, and same as same as is like mm -hmm. I said, same as you want to make sure that you stay within the realm of that whatever your page is talking about. So you can do same as as far as you know, um, and we try to personalize it. A lot of people say. You know, well, geez, you know, like I, you know, I'll do a same as for Phoenix's, you know, Bank One Ballpark where the Diamondbacks play, you know, and I'll person that, personalize that with a slogan saying, Salterra has season tickets to the Arizona Diamondbacks. This is where we go and watch them play, you know. So again, I'm tying in, not only am I tying yeah. in the, the different variables, but I'm personalizing that variable to the same as. That's right. kind of showing why it's the same as, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just don't list a link there. I just, I try to get a little bit more into it on the same ads, at least for the, for the good ones. Um, so you're showing Google, I mean, or whatever reads it, but you're yeah. showing Google, if, um, this is the thing and this is why it's related to me, right? Or, you know, associated exactly. with me. And yeah. when I've explained this to people too, so just think about how power, like just step back and think about how powerful it is. You get your website, <laughs> your entity, right? All these things. And if you can help Google connect the dots mm -hmm. <laughs> on these trusted resources and all this, like imagine if you had that power, yeah, that'd be amazing. Well, guess what? You have that power, you know, yep. and you can uh, sure. just put that right into your web page. So, you know, and it's, okay, uh, so and when we're here in Phoenix, well, guess what I'm doing right now? I'm going after the Super Bowl because the Super Bowl is here this year. So nice. we are writing a ton of content around the Super Bowl on my website, my schema. And I want people to go through my website to click a freaking button to buy tickets. <laughs> you know? So it has nothing to do with anything that I'm involved in except for traffic. Right. And so right. um, Phoenix traffic, traffic, local geo traffic is a powerful thing that people seem to miss. So not only do we need to be, a, um, you know, an authority in our space as far as our services, but we also need to be an authority in our space as far as geolocation. So yeah. um, I tell people, if you've got a state fair coming up, if you've got a rodeo coming up in your town, write about it. You know, start writing about it a couple months ahead of time. You know, write sub articles about it. You know, I mean, just start writing about you know, pricing structures and rules and, you know, what's going to happen at the event, you know, become a resource for the Super Bowl. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's just right. like, yeah, you know, anyone you take us to the Super Bowl in Phoenix, oh, they're Salterra. <laughs> so, has There's nothing to do. to do with their number one spot in Phoenix. Yeah, there is. You know, I mean, really, at the end of the day, I mean, even Google's core original algorithm, right? I've always told people it's kind of like if, if you come into the school, halfway through the school year and you want to be cool, well, you got to go sit down at the table with the cool kids. Like you have to have that association, right? And that's at a fundamental level. That's kind of what we're building in Google always is just, we have the authority that trust, you know, whatever labels we want to put on, but you're trying to associate with things mm -hmm. to help your own personal stature. Right. And this, this is such a powerful area to do that. And you can communicate it directly and not have the human beings on the page be like, what is all this crap that I'm reading? Yeah. <laughs> like this has nothing to do with whatever within the schema parts and stuff. So for sure. Um, yeah. Super interesting. Yeah, again, Pose and Terry with a, uh, a, a question here and you're taking it eight different ways. I hope people rewind, take some notes here. You're dropping some related slash slightly off topic bombs here that, uh, that tie all this in together. And, uh, mm -hmm. just really say again, appreciate you coming on and sharing this stuff. Cause Oh, for sure. Uh, this is gold, man. Yep. For everybody out there. So 
Um, okay, so that's short answer. Also, you know, using Wikipedia, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, do that. Use it. Um, and don't well, and, be and the reason, you know, locked into it. Part of your question was, you know, how, you know, how do I get in the knowledge graph, right? So sure. for the knowledge panel. And the knowledge panel, all it is is a bunch of different node information that Google collects from around the Internet and builds a panel. Um, yep. Our job as schema is to put all those nodes and area, everything into the same website so that Google doesn't have to search. So um, right. we know Google will go out and find a Facebook image to put in a knowledge panel. We know Google will go out and find a title from your website and put in the knowledge panel. They might even put some content in there. And a lot of no, a lot of knowledge panels that we see, <clears throat> you really can't figure out where it comes from because there's you're like, wait a minute, that's not how it's written on my website. Right. You know, so we all know Google will change our titles and descriptions to suit themselves. But, you know, I think where schema comes in again, it just brings in a whole bunch of different variables Google's already looking for. And it gives us a better opportunity to actually actually have our brand name in the knowledge graph. So, yeah, um, but the knowledge graph is something I tell people don't spend a lot of time and effort on because it's it can be there one day, gone the next. Yep. Um, a lot of keyword terms don't even have enough knowledge to have a knowledge panel if that makes sense yep. a lot of searches yep. so um it's like a gmb you know not every search has a gmb pop-up so or yep. gp g gbp i'm not always gmb um, abc xyz yeah exactly so you know and so i tell people the knowledge graph is great you know i'll even show it off but i tell even my clients look you know this thing could be gone tomorrow it could be back next week you know a lot of people, you know, there's a, a lot of people say they don't like the knowledge panel because it does give people information. Who says they're just going to click on that to go to your site and right. they can go below it? So, you know, the knowledge panel, I think, is is nice. It's a goal, but I don't think it's a goal. You should just gosh dang. Why is not don't spend a lot of time of why you can't get in the knowledge panel. Just just make sure yeah. that everything about you, your service, your company, your ownership or whatever is on that page for that query and leave it up to Google to show it. Yeah. You know, if you're so, doing best practices, uh, it should show if it's going to show. Right. I mean, and if somebody is up there that you want to kind of knock off and you want to reverse engineer it, you can do all that stuff. You know, I, yep. again, I, I'm more, give me number one organic and number one on the maps and I'm good. <laughs> so, right. yep. you know, um, but again, you know, it does pop up. I had one pop up yesterday and I was like, oh, wow, we got the knowledge panel. You know, it's like, you know, kind of cool, but you know, <laughs> right. it, doesn't, it doesn't really get that many searches. It's not really a huge money word. You know, yeah. it might get a couple leads, but it's not like, you know, um, you know, roof repair, you know, hail damage in Dallas type of keyword. So, um, right. yeah, so that's the biggest thing about the knowledge panel is just, you know, or the, just, you know, do do what you need to do, and if you show up, great. But just just focus on being in the top three and the map and organic, and it's really all you have yeah. to do. Everything else That's, is going to come. We just said something yeah. like that in a previous episode. Like the goal isn't the knowledge panel. If it pops, it pops. You yeah. Know, get number one GMB. Get number one in the naturals. You know, and if there's no knowledge panel, like you feel like there should be, whatever, man, you're number one. You know, that's that's the goal. Yeah. You know, is, is we're trying to get that. Exactly. So, yeah, hey, man, that's it's good stuff. Like, so it's not like you're going to get fired for not being in the knowledge panel if you have <laughs> right. number one in maps, right. number one in, you know, they might say, oh, hey, this asshole's my competition. Why is he up here? Well, yeah. let's kind of look and see how many leads you're getting compared to him because he's not in the maps, <laughs> which, right. is, which is typically what happens, right? So if they got a knowledge panel, don't get too excited because you're probably not doing well some other place. Right. I mean, they used to have a time if you were in the knowledge panel, you actually weren't on the first page organically. You know, they yep. actually would kick you to number Removed 12 it. or something just because they gave you the knowledge panel. I'm like, right. can I switch that? Can I request that? <laughs> I don't want the knowledge right. panel. I want to be number one. It you looks know? like some yeah. obscure ad over on the right-hand side here. People are clicking at the, uh, the now the number two result, which should be mine. I agree with you. Exactly, exactly right. <laughs> so, And try to get into the people also ask. The people also ask is where we spend a lot of time to try to get in there with the FAQ schema. Nice. So, yep. um, you know, we're always constantly updating our web pages, FAQ schema to try to get into that. People also ask. That's a powerful spot. So because Google that will be give good, you that. Uh, that might be a good next episode just as a little placeholder for us mm -hmm. or, you know, we talked about it maybe before a little bit, but things you can do to maybe enhance results or, or pop right and get more exposure. 
um, right along those lines. So exactly. we're up around about a half hour, Terry, a little longer than I promised you. Uh, we went through the questions no I had set up. Um, I think all is good there. Do you got any other closing thoughts or anything else you want to share with anybody? No, just like I said, um, I love coming on the show and just, you know, have me back whenever you want. And I'm, you know, happy to answer your guys' questions. Reach out to me if you have issues or challenges. Um, yeah. You know, as long as it's not going to take too much of my time and kind of give away the farm, <laughs> I'm an open book. Um, I kind Terry, of Terry does this for a career. He, get, he gets paid. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to hire him or hire his agency, <laughs> that's the number one thing. If you're looking for a ton of free support. Keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Um, people, of course, yeah, or, if they or, don't or have your info. Or come, or come to one that, of our events. We do a year. Or come to one of our events. We do many of them a year. So so if people want to find those events, find you uh, real quick. Why don't you share some of your contact them for how people might might track you down? Um, my website is salterasite.com. Um, and that's our main um, agency site. And then our our conferences and masterminds are all run through seospringtraining.com. Um, so you can kind of keep up to date with what's happening there. We do, we're, we'll be in Florida in a week and a half for our mastermind there. And then we're doing our big conference in April in Phoenix. Um, so we always have stuff going and I always encourage people, even business owners to go to these things because you kind of get an idea to kind of watch your butt of what other people are doing and then to get a better understanding of, you know, so you don't have to call Jesse and I and say, man, I hired this company for two years. They're not doing crap. Well, we're going to teach you how to not go two years yep. without saying they're not doing crap. <laughs> so, yep. and, you know, get some education on the topic. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, I, I've got one of my roofers is going to be in Florida. So, or excuse me, one of my moving companies. So, um, and he's, he just wants to learn. And so no problem. You know, that's what these events are for. And, these are events of four to see, you know, I'm hoping he sees how hard it is to work, <laughs> do this, you know, and then just understand that it is, it's not just as simple as changing some titles and descriptions and some header tags and calling it good. You know, there's a lot more to what we do and to get the results that we get, so to speak. And it's always changing, always changing. Always changing. Yep. All right, Terry, appreciate the time. Uh, if anybody um, is have a, having trouble getting a hold of Terry, obviously you can reach out to us through local SEO tactics and we'll connect you to Terry is a rock star and you'll be happy that you made the connection. Um, all right. I think that's a wrap, Terry. Uh, thanks for coming on, everybody. Hopefully that was some good knowledge for you and uh, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Again, that was the great Terry Samuels. Love having him on. Every time we have him on, we end up talking about the topics that we've prepared. And then Terry also expands on it and drops more knowledge. So uh, the area of schema for your website is pretty intimidating if you're new to it. We do have a number of episodes where Terry has kind of started off on a more basic level, as I mentioned uh, during the course of the episode. Go on out to localseotactics.com, click on episodes. Um, you can either pick one from there or... Uh, click the link to search and just type in Terry Samuels and it'll show you all the episodes uh, where we are talking with Terry Samuels and uh, breaking down some schema. Uh, if you want to reach out to him, uh, salterasite.com, Google Terry Samuels, or reach out to us here at Local SEO Tactics and we can connect you. Uh, Terry is our number one resource for schema. Uh, we lean on him heavily and uh, he's a guru. So check him out. If you found value in this episode and our show in general, we'd love to hear from you. I'm going to read a five-star review here from Oak Spring Farm Information. The review says, the podcast is so helpful. I started the first at the first podcast I am working my way through. I'm a farmer, so SEO isn't my thing, and I'm learning so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the review. If you are listening and found value, we'd love to get a review from you, too. If you leave one, we're going to read it on the show. Go on out to localisotactics.com, scroll down to the bottom, click on the link for reviews, whether you want to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google My Business, Google Business Profile, I should say, uh, Facebook, whatever it is, we make it easy for you. All the links are there. Click, um, send us a review. We'd love to hear from you, and it lets us know that we're doing a good job. And hope you like this episode, and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay.